It was a starlit night in Thiepville, in the trenches on the Somme, where a bunch of British soldiers were writing letters home. They were crowded all together, but each mom was alone, with thoughts of friends they'd see no more, of loved ones left at home. And as they wrote, they thought of times they'd had before the war, of dances at the Orange Hall, of walks along the shore, of watching Linfield on the ball, of their favorite scoring a try, of walking past the city hall on the 12th day of July, of sodas frying in the pond, of pints of black and tan, of days they spent at the Lamas Fair, of Dulles and Yalaman, of the girl they worshiped from afar, with a love she never knew, of coming home on a frosty night to a bowl of Irish stew, of working in the shipyards with the gantries looking down, of reaping in the harvest and bringing it to town, of catching rabbits in the field to try to make ends meet, of listening to the lamplighter as he walks the cobbled street. But as they wrote, the big guns spoke, the shells flew over their heads, raining down on the German lines to cut their wire to shreds. It would smash the Huns' defences, it would make their blood run cold. They'll be running back to Germany, at least that's what they're told. And now the time has come, lads, as over the top they go, to fight for king and country. Let's go and face the foe. But the wire has scarce been broken. It seems the barrage failed, and the stutter of machine guns brings down a withering hail. But the Ulster men were staunch and true, courageous to a man. With their cry of no surrender, they charged over the ravaged land. They fought the Hun with bomb and gun, with bayonet hand to hand. They took their trenches one by one and made their famous stand. They took the Schwab and Reed out, but their numbers they were few. Water it was running out, bombs and bullets too. Their flanks had not been taken, there was no place to hide, as machine gun fire cut into them, surrounded on three sides. But they held their trenches bravely till darkness fell that day, then they gathered up their wounded and retired from the fray. They fought their way back down that hill over comrades that had fell. They were thirsty, bloody, battered as they left the mouth of hell. Now many a last was left at home and many a mother cried for a father they would see no more or a brother who had died, for a boyfriend who they loved so dear or a friend with whom they grew, of an empty chair beside the fire or a church, an empty pew. But their names will live forevermore, as it was their finest hour. Their memories grow like the poppy's red in the fields round Ulster's tower. They did their duty to a man, fulfilled the glorious vision, pay homage to the volunteers of the 36th Division. <laughs>